Hey, what's going on guys? Dopes Warner here, and I spent roughly two to three hours the other night dealing with cable management on my 3D printer. It was tedious, it was not a lot of fun, but I decided that this would be a great time to do an episode on something that might not be the most exciting thing, but definitely something that is very important, and that is cable management when dealing with your 3D printer. So let's get into it. So in this video, I plan on doing a couple things. Um, first, we're going to talk about the importance, like why you need to do cable management or why it's important. Then we will talk about different methods of cable management. And then we will also take a look at uh, kind of what I did with this printer and the reasons for why I did it and uh, maybe some pros and cons and things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. If you have ever built a PC, chances are you know all about cable management. That is a huge thing and you know the reasons of why it is important. Now, for those of you that have not built a PC, <clears throat> and even for those of you that have, you there are some reasons why it is extremely important with 3D printers that you might not even realize. No particular order, but the first, purely the look. I actually had a viewer comment on my video of this printer the other day um, before I had done cable management and basically said that looking at it gave him anxiety. And I can completely understand that because it literally looked like a bunch of spaghetti noodles just everywhere. It was a mess. and um, the printer just looked incomplete or cr like crappy, if you will, because of the fact that there was no organization and you can see that there was no organization with the cables. So first and foremost, just the overall aesthetic look of your 3D printer will look a hell of a lot better if you take some time and do some cable management. Secondly, which is definitely more important than the first one, um, and this is one that all PC people know about, is the heat factor. When you've got cables all bunched up, it's going to create a lot of heat and trap a lot of heat versus having um, clean cleanliness and having a you know passage for, I guess, uh, air or wind to go through um, from your fans and stuff like that. Obviously, if like in my situation, I have an open build 3D printer where it's not an enclosed housing. So heat isn't necessarily as big of a factor as somebody who's got a Printer that's closed and all the electronics are stuffed in this little compartment and you just have cables everywhere then you definitely even more so would have a heat issue however still having a bunch of cables and wires on top of the ones that have to be plugged into the ramps board just kind of dangling around is definitely going to trap some heat um, so that's definitely something to think about electronics obviously um, you want to run them as cool as you possibly can and adding any additional heat to the ramps board that's already being put under a pretty heavy load with a 3D printer is definitely not a positive thing. Last and not least, which to me is the most important reason, and this is something that you deal with with 3D printers that you don't really deal with with a PC other than maybe a couple fans, is moving parts, moving axis. With a PC, again, if you've got cables dangling around here and there, yeah, it might create some more heat, yeah, it might not look clean, but you don't really have anything in a printer, I mean a printer, in a, in a desktop other than like a disk drive and maybe some case fans that are doing any movement. In a printer, it's completely different because literally, like everything is moving, with the exception of your frame. You know, you're going left, right, back, forth, up, down. And I personally got to experience myself in my DaVinci when I swapped over from the stock board to the ramps board and I had to wire and everything. My hotbed's thermistor cable wrapped around a spiral rod and wrapped, wrapped, wrapped as it was homing. I didn't see it and tore. And so I had to basically fish the um rest of the cable out of the motor where it had kind of like built up and gotten stuck in then i had to go ahead and rewire my printer bed which in the end wasn't the end of the world everything worked fine still a pain in the butt and it could be something more dangerous i mean you could literally get something that pinches some wires and shorts something out you can get something that rips something out i mean the stepper motors have quite a lot of power and you know you definitely don't want to get things trapped so for me the most important thing is to basically keep those cables routed in a sense where they are not going to be getting caught on any of the moving objects. Let's take a look at some of the things you can do um, in order to do cable management or to set up your cable management on your 3D printer. The first method or the first thing we'll talk about is going to be zip ties. And zip ties are obviously pretty easily accessible or readily accessible. You can find them anywhere from, you know, a Walmart to a AutoZone to whatever. I've got tons of them. To me, they are one of the single most important handy tools that any modder should have. 
I've used them for just about every single project I've ever worked on in my life. They are fantastic. With this printer, um, I redid my cable management, but originally I started off just zip tying the crap out of everything. And I will say that it did clean it up a lot. It did make it look a hell of a lot more organized, but the issue I ran into was because with the zip ties, they've got like a little, the head part, even when you cut off the extra, it's got a little like, you know, the head of the zip tie basically where you feed it through that locks it in place. Well, as things were moving and the cable was being pulled, sometimes the head would get like lodged on something and cause it to pull a little extra harder to get it over that spot just for a second. And that can cause shifting in your prints. So um, I'm not saying that zip ties will necessarily always do that. And I'm not saying that that's a reason to not use them. I'm just saying that's something to consider. It happened to me on a print. I use zip ties like crazy. If you guys look, I think I, I did do a video on it actually. So you can see my original cable management that I did on this printer before I changed it up. And I used a ridiculous amount of zip ties, overkill to the max. And taking them off to do this new cable management was kind of a pain in the ass. But again, add nothing less, use some zip ties to keep things together. The second thing you can do if you've got your 3D printer all set up is you can print out things called cable chains. And if you've looked at Thingiverse for any reasonable amount of time, I'm sure you've seen them before. Basically, they're these little chains. I got a huge one right here. Hold on. Cable chain. So this is basically it. You print them out piece by piece. You can make them however long you want. And they bend. And you can feed your cables through here. And originally when I saw these, I was like, man, these are really badass. And a lot of people were using them. And, you know, I just thought this is, this is really cool. This is how I'm going to do some cable management on my printer. Well, then I printed some out, obviously. And I went to install it on my 3D printer, and I didn't like the cable chain um, for a couple reasons. One, because it is a cable chain and it's 3D printed, it only can fold like this. You can't go sideways. If you go sideways with it, either it won't do it, it'll just disconnect like that. So that was like kind of the first turnoff for me with this stuff. Secondly was mounting it. Um, I had it just kind of like laying on my on my cable. Well, for the end pieces, and it's falling off, for the end pieces, you've got to build some kind of a mount to secure it in place, and it, to me, it just ended up being more of a pain than anything, and um, this is pretty bulky stuff. I mean, it's not super, super bulky, but if you have to use a couple of these for, like, like one for each axis or something like that, it ends up being kind of a pain, and to me, just too cluttered looking, although it's like a clean clutter, if you will. Um, but definitely not a bad option if you don't mind, especially using it maybe for like just one or two axis. Like if you could semi use it for your extruder or if you could semi use it if you have like a Prusa for um, under the bed, then that's, you know, that's an option. But um, I decided against it. Again, I considered it. So I've considered all these so far and tried them all, the zip ties and this one. The method that I pretty much exclusively went with was I picked up ooh, a bunch of this stuff off of Amazon. Um, really cheap and I'll link you guys in the description. There's different um, diameters and lengths depending on how much you need. I got way too much. I actually got enough for this which is done and my DaVinci to completely do that plus potentially a third printer. And the thing that gave me the idea was that the uh, Fulgur Tech, which is the company I bought this printer from and built this printer, this kit, actually gave you some of that um, Initially, when you built your 3D printer, um, only one, not a very long one, but I used it for my extruder and my um, extruders, uh, the hot end, as well as the thermistor. I fed everything through there, and I think the fan maybe too, to keep it all kind of nice, neat. And originally, I didn't want to get a bunch of that stuff because I thought that, ah, oh, it's just going to look kind of crappy with all these like little black twist cables all over everything. Ended up really liking it. And so I basically went ahead and wrapped everything um so i've literally got three well three right here that turn into two um for the extruder and the auto level servo um then i've got one for each end stop one for each motor um and honestly i don't think that it ended up turning out looking that cluttered could have done just one for all these cables if i'd gone with a thicker um uh, diameter of this wrap or I could even pick up a thicker one and literally wrap these two that are already pre-wrapped and that can make it look a little less cluttered. Um, you know, instead of having two, it'll be just one bigger one. But honestly, I think it looks really good. I think it looks a hell of a lot better than it did before having all of the different colored cables exposed. Um, so this is, this is the method that I recommend using personally. Um, you don't have to deal with printing out any parts. 
I don't have to worry about zip ties snagging on stuff. I still did use zip, some zip ties down here to kind of like secure some of the parts, but up here I didn't use any zip ties. So like if things do need to pull, well I guess there's one right here, but nothing past the point. So like if things need to pull, I don't have to worry about a zip tie getting caught. Plus there's enough slack where it's not going to be a deal uh, at all. So definitely the method I use, again, we'll link you guys in the description to where you can find that wrap stuff. Um, I don't know if it has like a name other than cable wrap, so I call it cable wrap. The most tedious part of my cable management process was nothing to do with wrapping that, which was a little bit annoying to you, but again, cable management is one of those things where it's tedious, it's annoying, but hopefully once you get it, you don't have to deal with it again, and it's pretty rewarding afterwards. Like, you kind of just want to sit there, crack open a beer, and admire the clean job that you did. So again, the most tedious part, though, that I did was not indeed wrapping. I actually went and unplugged every single thing that was plugged into my ramps board, took a big pair of scissors, and cut them, stripped down the cables on each thing, so all the end stops, all the motors, everything, and soldered them together, put um, shrink wrap or heat shrink tubing on all of it, and then put it back together. And so basically, I just made sure that everything had enough room to get to the ramps board, and then gave it a little extra slack, just in case, you know, you never know, I'd always rather give it a little more cable than a little less cable. That made everything look a hell of a lot better, because most of these things just come with like a generic standard size length cable that's way longer than necessary and they do that because they don't know what kind of 3d printer you're building a lot of this stuff again for the rep route community especially um, is designed to be able to build a ton of different printers and they use you know the same motors and hot ends and beds and stuff like that so they don't know what you're doing with it i will say that it kind of sucked you know cutting soldering wrapping it, it wasn't fun but made the biggest of differences if even if i had just used this wrap which again is better than not using anything at all it would have looked a hell of a lot worse because a lot of the on a lot of the cables i literally cut off about a foot if not even more than a foot and again that made a huge difference in this and so that is what i recommend doing i recommend taking the time and cutting the cables i i did them one at a time so that way i can make sure i put everything in back correctly um, I took a picture of the ramps board so I could see which direction I had the stepper motor cables plugged in, which you don't have to do. I mean, if it goes the wrong way when you put it back together, you can just flip it. But I did just for peace of mind. Um, I learned from certain experiences that, um, you know, definitely a good idea to take pictures of things before you take them apart. That way it's easier to put them back together. I highly recommend that you do it. But again, any of these three things, whether it's zip ties, cable, chain, or the freaking black cable wrap will will work you know it just depends really on how you want to do it there's not necessarily a right or wrong way these are just my opinions so um anyways i hope that was helpful i really do because cable management is extremely important and i think that people need to stress that a little bit more um because you spend so much time especially again if you're building a kit you spend so much time that in the end it's easy to just kind of like wing that or put that off because you just like want to get your printer rock and rolling which i get i really do i put it off for a little while too but don't put it off too long because again you're not going to be very happy with yourself if that if that laziness or lack of uh attention to that damages your 3d printer believe me you will not be happy at all on that note i will end the video guys um if you have any other suggestions at all um again these are just the three things that i thought of but if you got any other methods of cable management that you think hey you should touch up on this or hey you should recommend this please let me know in the comments down below and um if indeed there is something mind-blowing that i forgot potentially i will have to make an update video down the line if not it's still great to have stuff in the description to help out other people and um you know get a discussion going on cable management and stuff like that so on that note, again, I'll end the video. Dope Spawner, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you in my next video. Peace, guys.